Greetings from the home of the Acropolis. Greece has been here since time immemorial, but many things have changed. Wars are no longer fought on the shores of Troy. Now they're fought in the field of business and finance. Join us every weekend where we present to you the best of talking Greek business to show you what Greek business is really about because it's about the survival of this nation. Behind me are the halls of political power, but does anyone care about politicians and political parties? I think not. I think what we are interested in and what our viewers would like to see is whether Greece can get the bailouts, whether we can continue with some reforms, whether we can build a sustainable and competitive economy. Stay with us each week and we will explain to you in these turbulent times what the reform process looks like. But we will do it in an unpolitical and unbiased fashion because we're not politicians. From the hustle and bustle of downtown Athens, we will be focusing on business people. We will be looking at international entrepreneurs holding up the Greek flag high. We will be talking to innovative entrepreneurs taking on the challenge of the crisis and beating it. We will also be looking at those who know what the modern demands of business are. And of course, we will be speaking to all experts from all sectors that are important in this economy. And of course, just like the Cathedral of Money, the old stock exchange behind me, Sophocleos, we'll be looking at the all-powerful markets. So, who is Nick, your presenter? That's me. Well, I've done my tour of duty in investments, in law, and in top media across the world. But you know what? Let's see what the internet says about me. Let's talk now to economic analyst Nick Speckers. He's in Athens for us. Earlier today, over a coffee, I was joined by the economist Nick Skarakas. What we really need is all of the Eurozone governments to sit down with the lenders and work out a moratorium for the Euro periphery. So let's go to Greece. Economic analyst and international lawyer Nick Skarakas is he's normally in Greece. Yes, we're in Athens tonight. Good to see you, Nick. Yes, How does that add up, especially where you're sitting and all the hardships your country's going through right now? Well, to be frank, I, I don't think that uh, it's just a Greek default that they're debating today. I think it's uh, much wider European issues, uh, including the sustainability of the Eurozone itself. There is a bit of cognitive dissonance here, in the sense that if you ask most Greeks about the bailout cash, they're very happy to take it. If you ask them whether they would rather be in the Euro, well, 80% will say yes. An international lawyer, Nick Skrekas, who is in Athens. Thanks for being with us. Well, at this point in time, we have about a third of the population in Greece living underneath the poverty line. We've got about a million people unemployed. You don't help someone who is in that much debt by giving them even more debt. Now, what seems to be happening here is a massive transfer of wealth. Greece could already be in a state of unofficial default. It looks highly likely that the parliament will get enough votes to pass this package. It only needs a majority of the 300 members of deputies. But there is actually very little choice for Greece at the moment. Uh, both options on the table are very bad. In 10 years time, will Greece still be in the Euro? I think in a few years' time we may still be in the Euro. Mr. Skrakos, how could Greeks now elect their ideological descendants? I mean, really, how has it come to this? Hi, Karen. Well, there are a lot of uh, excuses, but really it's uh, not the best way for Greece to be viewed by the outside world. Mm, but enough about me. It's about asking the right questions and explaining the right answers. Here's a sneak preview. Mr. Lukas Pilitsis, the CEO of Pireos Equity Advisors, a subsidiary of the Bank of Pireos, which has grown extraordinarily through mergers and acquisitions just recently. But you deal with venture capital and private equity, which is 
early stage investments in real businesses. Why is it called the smart money? How to build their company to the next level. So smart money is the only way to go and it's the most important thing uh, for the venture capital and private equity actually uh, cycle. And because we at Talking Greek Business like to do our homework, we have with us the Director of Equity Research for VRS, Nicholas Yorgiadis. Welcome and thank you for coming along. Thank you for the invitation. Nicholas, you have decades of experience in analysis and you've looked closely at Intelin. Can you tell us a little of what you see about the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats? The most important thing for Intelin is the market it targets. So you expect good things? Yes, absolutely. Today we have with us Vasilis Nikolopoulos, the CEO and co-founder of Intelin, which is a smart grid and green energy company. Thank you very much for the invitation. Now, you have some very ambitious expansion plans, starting with the US market. Can you give us an insider's view of that? Yeah, uh, actually we have already raised $250,000 as a seed fund, and now we're negotiating our second round, uh, which is a bridging round in order to go and uh, move the headquarters to the United States, and more specifically to Silicon Valley, to the Bay Area. Uh, for us, uh, the smart grid market, it's an, uh, it's, an, in, it's an amazing market in US. It's an emerging market. It is our primary objective right now to go there and deploy the services. So yes, I presume that in uh, two, three months, we're gonna be headquartered in the, in the States, in the Bay Area, and we will start deploying uh, the services in California. And the next step will be to go to the East Coast as well, to NYC, New York. We have with us today a very respected man, a senior analyst whose expertise in geopolitics and energy security sets him apart. Yanni Mikoletos, welcome to the show. Thank you for your invitation and uh, I hope and I'm sure that we're going to have a fruitful conversation regarding Greek regional and international affairs, economic uh, or political ones. Tell us what you think our real assets in Greece are. For the moment we have already tangible assets that we don't do not do not account for because we think we take them from granted. For instance, Greece is one of the major lignite. Uh, lignite is a soft brown coal that they burn to generate electricity, uh, electricity, right? So we've got 100 billion euros there in yeah. lignite. Yeah, in and coal. In coal, yeah, in lignite. Coal uh, is being reduced in the European Union due to the emission issues. And yes, it's dirty, isn't it? There's a lot of CO2 that comes from burning yeah, coal. Yeah, and because of the Kyoto Protocol, you have to reduce the emissions. Yes. But China, Vietnam, India, Thailand, Indonesia, South Africa, they burn a lot of coal and they import a lot of coal and lignite each year. Okay. You travel the world and you speak to people just about everywhere, whether at forums or presentations or seminars. Have you had some success raising money for Greek SMEs? Um, sure, what, what we've done actually, we've worked, our strategy is the following. We built this group three years ago. Um, it's been anchor invested uh, by the uh, Piraeus Bank Group, as you said. Uh, these are not captive funds, so they're third party funds. We will go out uh, and fundraise once the situation, the financial situation gets a little bit better with the Greek economy. And we've been uh, successful to uh, get into a partnership, co-investment, on a 70-30 uh, basis. 70% actually of the total uh, fund commitments will come from uh, European Investment Fund. Um, to our group uh, for a technology fund in the ICT world. That's the one component and this is a big stamp of approval for a captive group like we are at this point. But because we work very international standards, uh, uh, they, they've seen the benefit of opening up the market. The second part in a specific a transaction that we have, it's a portfolio company uh, in one of our three funds. We have recently uh, been able to uh, bring in an American uh, fund which will invest uh, um, a certain amount which will be matched by the existing investors in these portfolio companies including obviously our fund. So very good news from a perspective of being an interest from the international arena in this field. So bottom line, so far 30% per S, 70% foreign and multinational institutions. Multinational institutions uh, in this uh, fund and obviously fundraising next uh, year to bring additional foreign money into the country. If I were an investor looking for a healthy return on say five million dollars, what could you tell me to impress me 
and to make me believe that I should invest my money with you. What can your company offer? Well, first of all, we have a great team, okay? Investors, the first thing that they look, it's the team itself. We have a very adaptive team, we have a great team, we have a flexible team uh, that continuously generates new ideas and continuously uh, achieves execu execution. Execution is the number one step in innovation and entrepreneurship. You, have, you may have many ideas, but uh, the thing is who is going to execute the idea, those ideas in order to generate revenue. So, uh, at, first instance, at first instance, we have a great team and very a flexible engineering division in order to create many, many things. Uh, secondly, we know very well the market. We can actually offer end-to-end -end consulting services, so we can actually pivot, light pivoting, uh, in order to avoid uh, 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 difficulties or to reach other competitors or to differentiate more in a very, very volatile market. Uh, and the third uh, thing is that we have, uh, I think we have great products right now. Uh, we have proved the value, we have proved the concept, and we are ready to deploy those services in the United States. Greece should also flex its muscles because Greece has a medium-sized army and armed forces which are, have a lot of uh, highly trained officers and uh, NCOs and a lot of uh, high-tech weapons. Are they good? Don't, don't misunderstand me. Yeah. I mean, I served in the Greek army myself. But do they still have the capacity and financial ability to do this because at the moment, you know, the cupboard's almost bare in terms of money. If we don't get the next loan, yeah. Yeah, the, got a the, problem. The money is an issue. That's why before you even declare an exclusive economic zone, you should speak to your partners in the European Union and put on the table the peculiarities of the Eastern Mediterranean and the importance for the energy security of Germany, France, Austria and the other countries. If they want to benefit, from a secure access of Middle Eastern and Eastern Mediterranean oil and gas to the West, to their own countries, which are thirsty for energy, this would support us. So let's read between the lines of what our guests are trying to tell us. What do the numbers really mean? What's the real story? We'll tell you what it is and we'll tell you why. So come with us on this weekly journey of Talking Greek Business and enjoy the riveting ride Nobody was uh, penalized by the management. They stay in their positions. They yeah, get it's, the... it's entirely possible that they were poorly advised because a lot of companies do engage in future transactions and not for speculation, just so they can lock in uh, yeah. the price and so there isn't any risk to them of a collapse no. and so they know what they're doing. It isn't uh, bad treasury management policy or commodity policy, but...